so you're an American defense contractor in the late 1980s. You've been making good money for years selling weapons and equipment to the US military. World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and of course the Cold War were all very good for business. But lately, things have been quiet. The Cold War had already peaked, which left you without any big orders for all your fancy bombs and planes. So somehow you needed to find a way to boost your profits. But then something magical happens out of the blue. The Pentagon and Congress wanted to make producing defense equipment easier. So they did something unexpected. They called for the defense industry to merge, to go from hundreds of small contractors to just a few industry giants. See, typically, the government wants to break up monopolies. Standard Oil, American Tobacco, and even AT&T's monopolies have been hunted down and destroyed. But here was the same government demanding that you monopolize possibly the worst industry to have a monopoly in. They were convinced that they could rely on the companies to do what was in the best interests of the warfighters and the taxpayers. Well, joke's on them. Because with the government's full support, you created a monopoly so big, so strong, that the US government and subsequently the US citizen would have no other choice but to just bend over and take it, to the tune of billions of dollars per year. Today, the military-industrial complex is arguably more powerful than America itself, and it all spiraled out of control after this one single decision. Stay dangerous, and this is the monopolization of America's military-industrial complex. And by the way guys, a lot of you guys are probably sitting down right now as you're watching this. But did you know that sitting down is actually one of the worst things in the world? Aside from the risk of looking like this when you're older, sitting down too much according to Yale Medicine can lead to cancer, weight gain, heart disease, vascular problems, and of course lower back pain and spine issues. And it makes sense, humans were just not meant to be sitting down this much. And that is why I recommend you get a standing desk. I've been using standing desks for 6 years now, and aside from cutting out artificial food, getting a standing desk is one of the best hacks out there for improving your health. And the brand I recommend is FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot was voted the best standing desk by TechRadar, and they're recommended by YouTubers like Linus Tech Tips. What I love about FlexiSpot is that compared to other brands that I've tried, their touchpad is super responsive and fast, the desktop comes with pre-drilled holes so you don't need a drill, they have a ton of different colors, sizes, and accessories to choose from, and the actual motors are strong enough to do this. So do your body a favor and pick up your own standing desk by scrolling down and clicking the link below. Scroll down and click the link below to get your own standing desk now. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. By the 1990s, there was so little demand for new weapons and so much new competition that it left you as a defense contractor super, super desperate, and you were willing to do anything to land a contract. That is the problem with world peace. Gone were the days of making easy money from war. For the past 10 years, you were just begging for scraps, hoping you wouldn't go bankrupt. But then in 1993, everything changed. See, over the past decade, it hadn't been just defense contractors that were feeling the heat of budget cuts, but the Pentagon and the DoD were feeling it too. At the time, it could easily take 5 to 6 different companies just to make one little missile, which was obviously a very expensive time-consuming process that was also a threat to national security. Ding ding ding. So to speed up the production process save money, and to give the American contractors a better chance at competing with the Europeans, the Pentagon came up with a plan. A merger. Get the 50 biggest defense contractors to sit down at a table, and to get them to merge into just a few giant companies. That way, that same missile that took 5 different companies to make before, could be produced quickly and easily with just one company. The merger was supposed to make America's biggest defense contractors more competitive and efficient, but you had other plans. See, it didn't take very long for you and your defense buddies to realize that you had been given the opportunity of a lifetime. Here was the government personally giving you permission to do what every other industry could only dream of, create a monopoly. So that's exactly what you did. 51 major contractors consolidated to five giants. 51 of the biggest and best American defense companies merged to form just five mega corporations, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, General Dynamics, and Raytheon Technologies. At first, your little monopoly seemed perfectly innocent. You would supply the Pentagon and the US military with weapons and equipment and get a very reasonable 15% profit in return. That was a deal. But you were running a monopoly, remember? And when has a monopoly ever been fair and reasonable? Sure, the Pentagon and the DoD had only agreed to 15% profits, but they have forgotten one little detail. By letting you monopolize, your cartel of five companies had all the leverage now. Who was the government to tell you what to charge? So you proceeded to take the US government and military for a ride. A very long, very expensive ride that they would never be able to get off of. In 
1991 one shoulder fire stinger missile cost $25,000. Adjusting for inflation, that's around $55,000 in 2023. But today, that same missile cost over $400,000. And that did not happen by accident. Take the Patriot missile system, for example. Today, the sole manufacturer of the Patriot missile system is Raytheon. And the only companies that make the actual missiles the Patriot system fires are Lockheed Martin and Boeing. No one else on Earth knows how to build this missile system or the actual missiles it uses. For the US government, that is a problem. But for you, it's a massive opportunity. See, the Patriot missile system is one of America's most important defensive weapons. Without it, we would not be able to track and shoot down enemy planes or missiles that enter American airspace. And you knew that. America needs Patriot missiles to keep the country safe. And since you and your other defense monopoly buddies are the only ones that manufacture them, you can just charge whatever you want for the Patriot missile system, and the American taxpayers would just have to cough up the cash. So instead of taking a reasonable 15% profit on each Patriot missile you built, you decided to push your profit margin to almost 40%. That means for each $4 million Patriot missile you produce, you're taking home almost $1.6 million in pure profits for just one missile. But 40% is just the beginning. It's still child's play. This, Bill, is a, an oil presser switch that NASA used to buy. Well, their oil switch, with all of the cabling, cost $328. This oil switch, we paid over $10,000 for it. In 2012, he was tapped to take the reins of the troubled F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. It was seven years behind schedule and $90 billion over the original estimate. But Bogdan told us the biggest costs are yet to come for support and maintenance, which could end up costing taxpayers $1.3 trillion. We won't be able to buy as many F-35s as we thought because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to buy air more airplanes when you can't afford the ones you have. The Pentagon had ceded control of the program to Lockheed Martin. The contractor is delivering the aircraft the Pentagon paid to design and build. But under the contract, Lockheed and its suppliers retain control of design and repair data, the proprietary information needed to fix and upgrade the plane. So you spend billions and billions of dollars to get this plane built, and it doesn't actually belong to the Department of Defense? The weapon system belongs to the department, but the data underlying the design of the airplane does not. We can't maintain and sustain the planes without Lockheed's... Correct. So what, and that's what, because we didn't up front either buy or negotiate getting the, the technical data we needed so that when a part breaks, the DOD can fix it themselves. The Pentagon had made an expensive mistake, and you were nowhere near done with them. See, as a defense contractor, you don't have the time or tools to build every single little part that goes into every gun, missile, or plane you sell, so you outsource a lot of that work to smaller companies called subcontractors. And these subcontractors also followed in your footsteps. In the 1990s, some of these subcontractors also saw their chance to make a lot of money by merging. And so that's exactly what they did. And one company that did this really well is Transdime. Transdime is responsible for manufacturing the parts for military aircraft like the Apache helicopter, F-16 jet, and the CH-47 Chinook. In fact, they're the only company that can produce a lot of those small parts. And as the only subcontract that can produce those parts, this company has made literally billions massively overcharging the Pentagon for all of them. Instead of the pathetic 50% profit margin the Pentagon sees as acceptable, Transdime's profit margins actually range from 17 to a whopping 4,451%. Yes, you heard that right, 4,451%. In 2006, Shea Assad says Apache helicopters were unable to fly without a crucial valve. Transdime had taken over the manufacturer and hiked the price of the valve by $747, up almost 40%. We said, look, we need these parts to go on aircraft that are in Iraq. They simply said, we're not going to ship it until you cough up to the battlefield. That's correct, this was going to the battlefield. By 2018, the valve would grow to cost almost $12,000. A Pentagon report called it extortion. So uh, explain to me, why can't the Department of Defense just step up to Transdime and say no? We're not gonna pay that. 
because we don't have another source for a lot of the spares that they provide right now. They are the literally only game in town in order to make an aircraft fly. Uh, so th we're at their mercy. Does that make sense to any of you? No. It is very concerning to me. Contractors see that they can do this. They are the ones that hold the power. So it's not really a, a true capitalistic market because one company is telling you what's going to happen. So if it's not a capitalistic system, what is it? Monopoly. Monopoly. Last year, Transdon made a nice $5 billion. While their stock, it's at a healthy nearly $900 a share. So as you can see, it pays the price gouge. But to the big five defense contractors like Boeing, you really don't mind that they're price gouging you. Because by overcharging you, you get to overcharge the Pentagon even more. Now I can already hear you saying, but Jake, as an American company, shouldn't your first priority be the safety and security of our troops instead of squeezing the government for every penny they have? <laughs> yeah, sure. But there is one downside to this. See, obviously, scamming the Pentagon in broad daylight is going to make you a lot of enemies. So when the public and government officials eventually start sharpening their pitchforks, you gotta take the only logical path. You gotta gather your best and brightest lobbyists and send them to Capitol Hill. Every year, dozens of Pentagon and DoD employees leave the government to join the defense contractors giving you all the insider information and contacts you need to keep America's defense budget growing and the monopoly thriving. Over the past 20 years, you spent more than $2.5 billion on the legal bribery that is lobbying, which is a pretty good deal when you consider that just one of the big five contractors already make over $67 billion in a single year. Honestly, you could afford to lobby even more if you needed to. With this measly $2.5 billion, you were able to employ an average of 700 lobbyists every single year. That's more than one lobbyist for every member of Congress for just a teeny tiny fraction of the amount of money you made. And they know exactly how to appeal to the people in power. Just tell the public that's for national security. No one's gonna question this when it's for the troops in Iraq or Afghanistan, or even the poor helpless civilians in Ukraine. Are you really stressing over a few thousand dollars when American men and women are dying in Iraq? Are you gonna let democracy fall in Ukraine over a couple billion dollars? And this argument has worked every single time. It's worked so well that in 2011, the estimated amount of money lost because of waste or overcharging from contracts for Iraq and Afghanistan totaled between 30 and 60 billion dollars. 30 to 60 billion dollars that you were able to grift straight into your pockets. And that was 12 years ago. How much could that number be now? We don't really know. And you want to keep it that way. Which brings us to our next step. Step number four, deny transparency. Ever since the 1990s, annoying government officials have always been nagging you over seeing your receipts. According to the government, any military equipment sold to the Pentagon should have a clear record of what it costs to produce, which could be a bit of a problem considering you don't want to settle for that sad 15% profit they're offering you. Luckily, you have the perfect solution. Label your products for commercial use instead of just military use. See, defense contractors don't only supply the military with products, they also make planes, equipment, and tools for commercial use. And commercial products fall under completely different rules. As a free market country, no one can demand a company publicize what it costs them to make commercial products, or else their competitors could easily use that information to copy their products or beat their prices. You don't ask the car dealer, the grocery store, and pizza parlor for cost data. No, you buy based on your assessment of the best price and fair value. The Pentagon can do the same for commercial source items. Thanks to this rule, you could just classify as many of your products as possible as commercial and no one would ever be able to ask you what they really cost to produce. So you got a little creative with your product descriptions. Sure, this valve is the only thing that can make those Apache helicopters fly, but it's also a really important component in commercial planes. So you technically can't ask us what it really costs. So that would be $10,000, thank you. And with that last little problem solved, you finally get to sit back and enjoy the fruits of the American taxpayer's labor. Thanks to your monopoly, the money is pouring in and life is better than ever. But like all billionaires, no amount of money is ever good enough for you. You have to take it one step further. You have to find a way to make even more. So you add one last step to your master plan. Instead of using all that taxpayer money the government gives you to improve or update your products, just use it to buy back shares to make yourself even richer. A Department of Defense study released last month found major contractors flush with tens of billions of Pentagon dollars to hand out to shareholders. 
In 2021, the top five defense contractors received more than $116 billion in Pentagon contracts. That's $116 of your money in the form of taxes. And how much money did their CEOs take home? Between $18 million and $23 million each. In total, the big five top executives were paid more than a quarter of a billion dollars. We were literally paying taxes. So these corrupt executives can live lives of total luxury. And the worst part is that there's nothing the government can do about it except spend even more. In March, the Pentagon announced its largest budget ever, $842 billion. Almost half will go to defense contractors. See, everyone knows about the war in Ukraine and how profitable that's been for the military industrial complex. But did you know that there's another secret American war going on right now that is arguably much worse than Ukraine? A secret war that has been going on for nearly 10 years that's killed over 377,000 people, 60% of which died from starvation, drinking unsafe water, or not being able to get medical care. A war that some call the greatest humanitarian crisis on the planet right now. And yet while America sits back and calls Putin evil, you never hear a word about this war in the news. You don't hear about any billion dollar aid packages going to help these poor people. Nothing. Why? Because in this secret war, America is the evil one. And what war is this? The war in Yemen. And why is America involved in this war? Because of one reason and one reason only. To keep the Saudi royal family happy. And we expose all of America's misdeeds in the Yemen war in our new private documentary that is definitely too spicy to be posted publicly. In fact, it's already age-restricted, and you can watch it right now by clicking the card on the screen. Click the card on the screen to watch now.